unless you have a straight partner trajectory where you're going to have equity in the business or where you're going to have some longevity in the business guaranteed I don't think it's wise for you as a young professional to box yourself into one position or one company for more than three years Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. My name is Annette. I upload videos once or twice a week covering a wide variety of topics. Sometimes we talk about fashion, sometimes we talk about career issues, other times we talk about motherhood, luxury, shopping, lifestyle vlogs, everything. There's something for everyone, so be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new here and also check out my prior videos. So today I'll be discussing a topic, one that's very dear to my heart because I've experienced it and two I've gotten a lot of requests as to any advice that I can provide in this issue and I'm glad that people feel comfortable enough to reach out to me where they ask me these questions and on some level I'm hoping that you are going to take my advice being that you're seeking out the advice I'm hopeful that on some level you know we're able to navigate these crazy issues together in the workplace um, so what are we talking about today as you can tell by the title we're talking about how to navigate through toxicity in the workplace Oh my god, I've been in so many toxic situations at work, so many toxic work environments that it just makes my stomach churn. Um, talk about it from sexual harassment, I have dealt with it, to racial discrimination, I have dealt with it, to just, I'm, I mean, it's just so many things that us as black women go through and I'm not discounting the struggle other non-black women go through as well, but I know that as a double minority, our struggles are unique and um, navigating through them in a professional setting requires a skill set, requires a way of thinking and requires some execution that you have to follow through. So I'm here to share with you things that have worked for me and how you can navigate through all of this. Now disclaimer, right now I do own my own practice so I don't work for an organization anymore but I do have clients that are firms so I do have to on some level um, still navigate through this office, po office politics because I'm an independent contractor for XYZ firm and I may have to you know navigate through those issues. Only able to say this because by the time this video comes out I'll be almost 10 years out of law school. So so um, I've earned my keep, if you will, to be able to get to the point where I'm doing my own thing. Plus I had a baby in the pandemic, so I had to pretty much you know, reorganize my life and rearrange my life in a way that will work for me and that's where I am right now. Never say never, I still have my dream job out there, which is basically being an in-house counsel for like Chanel or Richemont, so call me if you watch it. In the interim, all that goes to say that that doesn't mean that I'm discounting any experience anyone may have with toxicity in the workplace. Absolutely not. I've been through it. I've been fired. Like, I've been laid off. I've been fired. Whew. Anyway, but let's go ahead and get started. So you know what toxicity is about. Toxicity comes in different shapes, forms, and talking about it not right now makes me feel sick to my stomach. You can deal with toxicity um, in the workplace with your co-workers or your superiors or just everybody. It can be an organizational culture that is just toxic or it could just be a, a group of people. And it could just maybe just be the way you interact with people in your team and that makes them toxic towards you. Now, before I go ahead and start any of this, I just need to first of all say that we need to make sure that the problem is not you. That you're not showing to work to the every day with an attitude or you're not showing to work, you know, upset or you're not failing to interact with other individuals at work for whatever reasons. Like, everything I'm going to say is premised on the idea and the concept that you're doing a great job, you're excellent at what you do, you come to work early, you give 110%, you are on point as in decimal with everything you do and you don't have an attitude, you don't have a superiority complex or an inferiority complex, you are the best version of yourself. So if all of that is in place and you're still dealing with toxicity in the workplace, then maybe these tips will help you navigate through. The very first thing I recommend you to do is to find an ally. You need to find someone who is in your corner. Now, this person may not be 
still at the organization, but it has to be someone who has an intimate knowledge of the organization. So I'm not talking about just you talking on the phone and calling your mentor and going over these details. No, I am talking about someone who's either worked at that company, worked at the organization, or still at the organization that knows a lot, that you can trust, that's your confidant, that can give you information about other people who had worked there prior to you or people who are still there, can help you understand and navigate through the relationships between the powers that be and just other individuals and can give you a bit, a bit of a history um, of how things work. It's so difficult to find a good confidant slash ally. Um, it may also come in the form of a secretary, honestly, using the legal positions because obviously that's what I know. So um, you can feel free to fill in those positions you know, as well as you see fit. But you need an ally, an ally that you can trust. Now here's the tricky part. It has to be someone who doesn't have anything in it for them. So if it's someone who's trying to use you, let's say if you're like a third year associate and then your ally is a first year associate, um, that first year associate is probably just trying to use you to you know, gain some clout or either to gain some more knowledge and things like that. So it's not a clear picture. So it's not a clear exchange. Instead, you want someone who's been there for a long time, who doesn't have anything to gain, you know, from getting your friendship, who's just genuinely there to help you navigate. And it's probably someone who's been there before you and it's probably someone who's going to still be there after you leave. That's why I said someone who doesn't work in the organization but is familiar with the organization intimately will be excellent, like an ex-co-worker or, you know, something like that. So find an ally that can give you useful information that can help you navigate through things at work. Second tip is for you to know the powers that be and understand the relationship between the powers. So if it's a company that has maybe say three partners, understand the relationship with each three partners. How did they come to be? For example, if it's a company that has let's say two male partners and a female partner, then um, you may need to suck up to the female partner a little more than the male partner so she can see that you are doing an excellent job because she's probably experienced mar marginalization on some level um, and we would like to make sure that other people, I'm hoping, you know, are not going through the same thing or haven't gone through the same thing. Um, also understand how she came about. Was she homegrown? Did she start out there as, as an intern or as a first year? and now she's a partner or does she later move for somewhere else. Understanding the history behind them can help you make decisions. There you know that, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how I need to approach the situation. And for example, those th same three partners, if one is a hothead, the other one is a yellow mellow, and the third one is a snake and difficult to navigate, know how those three people you know, interact and know that if you're having a conversation with a quote unquote snake of the group, that conversation is going to get leaked no matter how confidential to the hothead who's likely going to react in a hothead manner. And then the yellow mellow may be a bit more trusty, if you will, but again, you can never tell. So just understanding the powers and how they interact will definitely help you navigate through a toxic The third tip that may help you while navigating through a toxic situation at work is to know that not everybody who looks like you, who has the same skin color as you, has your best interest at heart. Not everyone. I can't tell you how many times I've been dis I was disappointed as a young associate when I found myself sucking up to the black partner or the black of counsel, the black senior counsel, and just getting burned and just feeling so devastated. In fact, one of the most toxic situations I've ever dealt with at work was re relating to a female black partner. Yep, and this is me. I'm a member of the Association of Black Women Attorneys. I'm a member of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. I'm all about lifting as we rise. I'm all about, you know, women empowerment and, you know, women succeeding in the workplace and all of that. And yet I was burned huh, by a black partner. She had a reputation called a B-I-T-C-H. She loved it. She thrived on it. I hated it. I don't like confrontation. I'm an attorney, but I don't have to be adversarial. Now, if I need to be adversarial, I will go there. Don't get me wrong. And when I was dealing with her, I was much younger, so I was much more, you know, um, you know, I would say feisty with my comebacks, but at the same time, eager for acceptance and eager to be loved and respected and all of that. Now, I'm in a different place in life where I can navigate people like her a bit more temperate than when I was back then. However, she made it a point of duty to ensure that everything I did was scrutinized 10 times over. She said it to me like the very first day that I met her. She was like, I'm going to make your life a living hell because I want you to be a to the best version of yourself and I thought oh okay great she wants you know she wants what's best for me great I didn't know she actually meant it like 
she was serious with it and it was terrible it's the mentality of carrot and the stick right stick and then carrot stick and then carrot but when you just get in stick 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 no carrot then you realize uh, there's really nothing in it here for me you know this person is just not it's not working we can't work together um, I can't be scrutinized by you 24 7 I just don't want to deal with you there's so many more opportunities out there that I don't have to be subjected to you and your issues and she did have issues at the end of the day there is some jealousy you need to pay attention to that as well there is a feeling of when I was your age I was XYZ there's some of that. There's also a level of this is your rite of passage. I have to bully you and I have to belittle you and do all these crazy things to you and make you feel less than and then break you to the bone. Then you can eventually build yourself back up and then be my bestie. No, that's just not me. Um, I think of myself too highly to succumb to situations like that. I just refuse to because I know that A, the work that I do is good. B, I'm a good employee but if you don't see that and all you want to do is find faults and you know nitpick and all of that then I'm just gonna have to exit out of the situation sadly um, and all that was a black woman so it's it's extremely heartbreaking my issue with sexual harassment my very first job at a law firm who tried to sexually harass me my boss and he was a black man so again very fact that somebody has the same skin tone as you does not mean a thing for the most part it doesn't so you have to dig deeper and make sure that person is actually for you most of the time your allies are not going to be people who look like you unfortunately and what I'm saying rings true for most professional settings you know medicine law accounting so I'm attesting to that personally I've even had situations where I've written memos with senior counsels who were black and you know we got to the drawing board and they were basically they reviewed the memo and they have any issues with it but then the partner comes in and they're like um, I don't like the work that you did and their senior counsel is like sure yeah me too I don't like it and I'm like you never said anything you are a black man you are a black man you know how hard it is for me to get a job here and for me to prove my worth here and you had the opportunity to correct my work many times and you did not then now we are in the drawing board and then you're putting me out like fish to dry so know that if I knew that, I would have not been as distraught as I was. Um, as you can tell, I probably still have some issues with all of that. Um, I need to see a therapist. Um, but if you know that going forward, it is easier for you to navigate. You know the saying, not all skin folk are kin folk. So let's think about that for a second. So once you understand that, that would definitely help you navigate easier. And next tip is for you to plan your exit. I never go into a job thinking that, oh, I am going to quit or I'm going to get fired. No. But after a while, I get a feel of how things are and then I do an evaluation and understand what do I want. Do I want to be here long term? Do I want to be here short term? And honestly, at this day and age, this may be a bit controversial. Unless you have a straight partner trajectory where you're going to have equity in the business or where you're going to have longevity in the business guaranteed, I don't think it's wise for you as a young professional to box yourself into one position or one company for more than three years. The world is your oyster. There's startups everywhere. Now it's a post-pandemic world where we are um, just working from home, figuring out things ourselves. There's no reason why you should be confined under the oppressive thumb of a dictator employer if you find yourself in that situation. I'm not asking you to work anywhere less than a year. Sometimes life happens. I've worked at a place for eight months. It wasn't ideal, but I've also worked at a place for three years plus. So it's one of those situations where you have to find out what's best for you, but also keep your eye on the prize. If you want to be here, are you sure there's a partnership trajectory for you? One of my best friends just got a made partner at 34 years old in Manhattan in a law firm that's predominantly white. So don't tell me that it cannot be done. It's very difficult because she sacrificed a lot to get to that position but she knew that that's what she wanted and she worked for it and it was open and available for her some other firms that's not a possibility and you have to know that instantly so know how you're going to exit plan your exit strategy early on so that way you can work towards it the next tip is for you to milk your connections and milk your networking opportunities for example um, you obviously are going to meet people at the firm you don't know who they're connected to right you don't know where they come from who they're connected and what their background is well now is an opportunity for you to do that cozy up to them know their backgrounds and everything because you never know when you're going to need help or when they may need you because networking is in the two-way street and then 
maximize your exposure as well. So the firm or the company may have like parties or events or networking organizations or, or charity events and things like that that you may be invited to. Use that as an opportunity to expand your network under the firm's umbrella. I'm not Indian or South Asian, but one of my prior firms, the South Asian Bar Association, was having an event and they needed people from the firm to represent the firm. I showed up, I made connections, and Preet Bharara, who was the previous Attorney General of the Southern District of New York, is a well-known politician, he was there and I got to shake him uh, you know and just get to know him and uh, not just him you know but I got to meet him and I got to meet a couple of other people um, now are we best friends no but work with a kid what I'm saying is you just never know where those opportunities are going to take you I've been in situations where I have met the mayor of cities in Jersey or even um, attorney generals of the Bronx or Brooklyn a district attorney his past now but I met him um, all through the umbrella of the prior firm because they needed someone to go out and represent the firm and I did that. Um, so use that opportunity, use that avenue to make sure you are maxing out your connections, make sure you're maxing out on your exposure and work it out, work through the toxicity to make sure you're getting those opportunities because guess what, if a place is toxic, there's nothing you can do about it. No amount of Hussein, no amount of Ian Levanzanting, no amount of journaling, that can detoxify an already toxic work, work environment. You just have to find a way to navigate through it all. The next tip I recommend for you is to use the mirror skill. Okay, your boss is a B-I-T-C-H, no problem. But she likes long necklaces though, and she wears them every week, and they are hideous. Okay, you could buy yourself a couple of long necklaces, and then next time you see her in the, in the break room, talk about your necklaces. Your boss likes to use analogies from Seinfeld. Okay, you hate Seinfeld. You go home, watch a couple of Seinfeld episodes, and then whenever you're hanging out with her, drop in a Seinfeld hint here and there. People like what they like, and they like to see what they like in other people. Say that again. People like what they like, and they like to see what they like in other people. That's why mirroring as a tool works so damn well. Now, I personally, I know this can be difficult because we just like to be true, we like to be who we are, we like to stay with the program and do all of that. I get it, but that mirroring effect will help negate and dilute some tension and negativity your boss or your superior, or whoever you're having an issue with, may have towards you. It helps make you more approachable, it helps you more likable, and people who get the best gigs at work, they're not the best at work, they're not the nicest looking at work, they're the most liked at work. For whatever reason, people who are liked by the powers go further out. So you want to make sure at least, even if you're not loved, you're somewhat liked. And the mirror effect is an absolute excellent way to do that. And the final seven tip, if you didn't listen to anything I said here, listen to this. And I know this is very difficult because, hey, even sometimes I struggle with this, but avoid gossip. Avoid locker room talk. Avoid gossip. If someone comes to you like, girl, can you believe what Diane in accounting did? I response, oh man, that's crazy. Something else, oh girl, can you imagine XYZ said XYZ? Oh wow, that's unfortunate. You know, shut them down because you don't want to then filter all that information in. You don't want to receive all that information. You don't want to be clouded by that information. You also don't know how trusted that information is coming to you. So the only person you should be engaging in banter with or deep conversations with is your ally slash confidant. And you may not even find one until you've been there for like six to eight months. So in the interim, be like a sponge. If someone comes to you and tells you oh, gossip, just let it just drain out. No need for you to absorb all of that because that will be detrimental to you. And they can turn around and say, you said that, not them. And it could just be a whole issue. So I hope you find this video helpful. These tips have helped you navigate through toxic work environments that I have had, even as an employment attorney, believe it or not. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a nice, huge, resounding thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and catch up my previous videos and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys!